last video we were changing the dining room into my office we painted the walls and then i unfortunately got sick towards the end of the video so i had to take nearly a week off to try to recover i have been using the valspar classic walls and ceilings in the color weather the storm which is this gorgeous green like emerald green dark green color that you see on the walls behind me it's so perfect for what i envisage for the room but i do need to finish things off so as you can see i've still got some wall paint to do i've got to kind of do all the trim around the windows and i definitely need to do a second layer i wanted to do a quick update on what i think of the classic valspar paint as opposed to the premium version so i use the premium in my living room and i've used the classic in here i don't know if i necessarily see a difference in terms of being able to put it on the walls they both spread pretty well really great coverage they were consistent in formula and colour. Both honestly a delight to work with. I think especially with a colour like this, I don't know if you can see behind me, but this is one coat of the paint so far. Ness did a fantastic job at painting the walls, considering it was her first time. I did give her some guidance, but honestly, like she smashed it, like wouldn't necessarily need to do a second coat. I'm going to, because I know that you should try to do two coats of paint at least with a dark colour, especially when you're going from light to dark. But there's no patchiness. Usually you can see the roller marks and stuff. There's just nothing like that so yeah hats off to the um valspar classic paint wall and ceilings paint it's actually really really good then i want to paint the trim the architrave and the um what are these called skirting boards now these have been painted um, and restored they used to be a dark wood color which matches all of our internal doors in the house but they must have got tarted up so that they could sell the house on for a bit more and to be honest they've done a great job they look like they've been painted really really well I actually thought they were brand new but they're definitely painted in order to paint them I'm using the Valspar premium wood and metal paint I've never actually used the Zinza bin primer the 123 bullseye one I think that's what it's called I'm actually quite excited to try that out because apparently you can paint that on on top of anything and any furniture paint will stick to it also been suggested to use a rug to cover any cables that might lay on the floor which is a fantastic idea so we'll have a little bit of a play around with that because I definitely would like a rug in here we've got hard laminate just to give that kind of cozy vibe because I will be doing a lot of my work in the evenings I film during the day usually so evening times will be my time to come in here and kind of like relax do some work in my own little space I think having a rug on the floor will really set the mood I'm checking my supplies to see if I have got some primer paint. I don't think I do, but, but do you know what I used to do? I used to just not have anywhere that I had a clear view of where like my paints, my spray paints, my fillers, like all of that stuff was. So I used to always go to Wix, being and screw Screwfix and just rebuy things and then find my old stash like later on. And it was obviously super annoying because now I've got two things to store, but also it's a waste of money. Like I don't need to be spending that money yet. So. In Oh my god, a Halloween mask. It's in the corner of the garage. Oh my god. <laughs> I just crapped myself. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, it was a waste of money. So I now have all of my paints on display. Pretty sure I don't have a primer. No. So we're going to head to Screw Fix to go and buy some. By the way, over the weekend, we had a little bit of a party for one of my friend's birthdays and we ended up leaving at around midnight to go out and this, this line here, you can see this hole was pouring with water and there was water just literally pouring out of this hole onto the floor. Like when I say it was, we were leaving to go and get in the taxis, so we just had to leave it. So we just left towels on the floor. But Ness said like, do you think it's time for a plumber? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Cause there's just no way that we're gonna track it down. Um, the only thing that I can think of is cutting another hole directly where the leak was happening and seeing if I can fix the two pipes together myself. But I just don't know why that's happening. It's still, I can't figure that out. And that's what I want to know. So I think we're just gonna get a plumber. Just been and collected our primer it sounds really watery inside can you hear that maybe it just needs a good shaking but i'm not gonna do it in the car oh my god imagine it says here shellac base interior use high hiding seals all stains uses all paint sticks to all surfaces without sanding i don't know if i said this earlier but this is the reason that i bought this one because all of the woodwork in the room in the whole house has already been painted with a it looks like it's been painted with a water-based paint 
rather than an oil-based gloss. I think if I were to go over with just the Valspar trim paint, it might work, but to be honest, I just wanna play it safe. Put this on, just do like a dead thin, real quick coat, let it dry, and then put the um, Valspar color on top. And also this is good, because then I've got this for future projects, because I have always wanted to try this. Right, I'm shaking the life out of this. And I know it is a water based, oh, it's shellac based, but it feels really watery. Like it must be a bit thicker than this. This feels like it would literally just roll off anything I put it on. This doesn't feel right. It looks like water. Wait. Look at that. Can you see that? I'm going to open the windows because it has a bit of a of noxious smell. We're just gonna have to, like this is so, this can't be right. I've shaken it to death, it cannot be this watery. But like, that's just gonna pour off the sides. As I said, in the future, this room is gonna get remodeled into the kitchen, hopefully, which is not like imminent, but it's relatively close in the future. So I'm not bothering exerting energy into prepping this skirt and making it absolutely perfect. I am, um, just going to do the bare minimum, which is use this primer as a base to hold the paint for a long enough time. Like I don't need this to last five, 10 years, you know? The tough thing about this is I can't see that I've painted it on, so I just have to have faith that I'm putting enough on. It has got a really strong smell though, so if you're sensitive to smells, or paint makes you feel funny, then I would use a mask and open a window. Okay, so the trim work is all done and it says it takes you can recoat it in 45 minutes and to clean up you can use methylated spirit. I managed to keep it off of the floor, thank goodness, because it is such watery stuff, but um, I'm just gonna wrap my brush in, this is from the other day, but I just like to reuse them. I try not to use it on the same side as the paint from before though, so. I'm just gonna wrap this up. In fact, I probably could just clean this up right now. I actually can't be bothered and I need to go to my friend's house because I'm having a bit of a girl's night. So I'm just gonna wrap this up. It's gonna have to be a tomorrow job to paint the trim work. And I actually think it's gonna take me a lot longer than I initially thought it was going to. Oh my God, what a fantastic start to the day. So as you can see, I didn't end up finishing the skirting board yesterday. I was written off last night, so I've gotten up early to do it. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Probably not. But there is the whirring of a chainsaw because our neighbours, who have got the tallest trees ever in their gardens, are finally cutting down their side of the trees. So obviously we got ours done a good two months ago now and it made a difference to how the garden looked in terms of the tidiness. However, it didn't really allow much more sun in than probably the first two, three hours of the day in the morning because the sun rises behind our house, it goes over the top and to the side and over the top and to the side is where our neighbours trees are and they were heights above even our tallest trees at the time heights above and super 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 thick we've got beech trees they look like they've just got some sort of species of like the lande conifer which is like one of those bushier trees and they're just so tall and i woke up this morning can you hear it what a glorious sound. I woke up this morning at eight o'clock and it sounded like someone was maybe mowing their lawn and I thought, who mows their lawn at eight o'clock in the morning? And I was like, they'll be done in 20 minutes, it's fine. And it's just been going on and on and on all morning. And then I literally just went in the shower, was looking outside my window and I seen a tree surgeon up in the tree cutting it down. The reason why I'm so happy is that in the summer, we were kind of worried because um, standing in our garden looking at maybe like two o'clock in the afternoon when the sun's at its peak, it's at its hottest. Half of our garden was taken over by the shadows of the trees. So I'm so excited to see now, um, maybe like two, three o'clock, how much more sun we get. 
there's a point in which it just goes behind the house and there's nothing we can do about that, but we will be getting a few more hours of sunshine. Now that's made a difference as to probably the health of our plants when we come to do the gardening. It's gonna be way more places now that I can put certain things because the sun will reach there for a good amount of time. It just means that we're gonna get so much more sun in the garden for barbecues, parties, chilling, relaxing, sunbathing. We still have a lot of privacy. So one of my main things about this garden was that we are so private that I reckon we could sunbathe in the nud if we wanted to and i'm hoping that they don't cut their trees down so far because i just do love the privacy of our garden it just feels like it's our own little space but we'll have to see but nevertheless i'm super super happy with that okay so let's have a look at how these skirting boards have dried because if i'm being honest i'm not sure i'm not sure and I think it's because I used that primer. I should have maybe just used a typical wood primer. Like, do you like to have a great one? I don't know how much you can see here. Can you see that? So that's one coat, of course. So I do need to take time and do a couple more coats. And I was being very slapdash yesterday. So you can see there's drips of paint. I was just over it yesterday. But can you see all this pebbling effect? That's where when you brush it on, it leaves like these kind of water droplets as if it's repelling the paint underneath i'm hoping that with the second coat it will look much more smooth but also darker because this color and this color are meant to match but this color feels a bit more green than this color but there are edges where they do look like they they do match up relatively well so i'm hoping that a second coat will look a bit better i also need to take the doors off in order to paint this i don't know what the etiquette is about painting door frames so obviously i'll paint up to the skirting at the front of the door frame but then when on the inside do i stop i need to be conscious about that because i don't want to be able to see it from the outside obviously when the door's shut also I don't think I'm gonna paint the doors just yet because I'm so in two minds about painting them green or just painting them black or staining them black still. I know I keep going on about it, but I'm just, I'm still very undecided. But yeah, I think I need to do a little bit of thinking as to like, when the door's closed, it looks like this, open, it looks like this. I'm excited to see how this, this bit looks after it's been painted. It looks very crisp and white against the green and it does feel very, very nice, but I think the green's gonna look much more classy, darling. So yeah, currently 11 o'clock. I'm gonna see how long this takes me. Probably not not too much past half 12, one. And then I'll do a second coat in the evening. And then finally, I'll be able to move stuff back into the room because it'll be relatively done. Thought I met you at the wrong time. Then you caught me on that one night. Girl, I wanna know how this thing get out of my controls. Zip line into your timeline. Hey, that body don't lie. I didn't care for the hype, yeah. But when I saw you tonight, ooh, girl, you know just what you're doing. I'll go a thousand miles to show you that I'm right for your love, hey. Keep breaking eggs when you passing them by. Make sure they know that you're loving your vibe. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maybe these doors are solid, but they look like these doors were just MDF, but they are way heavier than the doors in our old house. And voila! Now we have a clear space to paint. So what I'm going to do is grab the masking tape again, and I'm just going to masking tape inside edges where I want the paint to go up to. It just helps with a cleaner, crisper line. It is going to take me another five minutes, but it's going to mean that I don't have to, to try to perfect with, um, with this paint. It's harder. I don't know how to explain it, but it's harder to try to do straight lines with wood trim and furniture paint than it is to just do emulsion paint. It's thicker, it's a little bit less predictable. So do we go this way, this way? Do we put it here, do we put it here? My concern is the door closes and it aligns with this strip here. So I'm thinking to put the tape on this piece of the door so that this strip gets painted, all of the architrave gets painted. Or, but then I don't know, when you open the door, maybe you shouldn't see the green, so maybe I should put it there, and then just do mainly the architrave. And like, if I try my hardest to get it right up into this coin, this coin, <laughs> this corner or joint, I don't know what to do. Like, if I did that, I just don't think that would end up as tidy as I, as I think it would. Would you be able to see the white through the door being closed as well? 
I should have tested that before I took the door off. Yeah, maybe I'll do it like that instead of the green all the way in. So that when you open the door from this side, it still all looks white. Let's do that. Let's do that and then if I do it really badly, at least we can we can bring it back and paint rather than like I won't be able to take that paint off. You know? So are we going with that? Does that look good so far? This is all very much a learning curve for me as well. Like I've never ever done this before. I probably should have done some research and seen if there's like best practices when it comes to painting architraves and door frames and stuff. But I didn't. So this is a learning curve. Again, don't mind on this room because this is kind of my practice room. This room will be changing dramatically in the future. It's not like it's here forever, but I do like the changes that we've done already. So let me trim this out. I'm gonna get it painted. Are you ready for this? Painting the skirt in was the best decision I've ever made, but also the worst decision I've ever made because it was so much effort. I am very on the fence as to if I like the Valspar wooden metal paint. I don't know if it's that paint or if it was the primer that I used underneath by Zinza. I'm just really surprised, but I think the shellac base, I should have gone for just a water-based primer, like a Dulux one that I've used a million times before, and I think it would have been a much better pairing. But we got there in the end. It required two pretty thick coats and just some patience. Look, I love it. I'm absolutely in love. Can we see? Can you see this uh, architrave? I think you can you get the gist, but it's all one colour and it just feels before it felt quite boom boom with the white coving, white skirting and the architrave. Now it does feel like it engrosses you a little bit more, like it just kind of hugs you. It's like an envelope all around you, just one pure colour rather than the green and the white was quite stark between the two before. Um, the doors obviously still are not very nice colour. In my opinion, I know some people love it, but I just don't think. Uh, do you know what? <laughs> Looking at that, they, I'm not mad at them, but I think a darker wood tone or a black stain would pair much nicer. I was, I was so contemplating painting the doors the green as well, just to kind of like flood with the whole same colour, but I just feel like I would maybe regret that. So, right, when I um, paint, I always take off around electrical devices i i unscrew them pull them out of the wall a little bit mask and tape them it just makes everything clean oh that was so close to hitting my foot um it makes everything so much cleaner so much easier and so much tidier and faster i need to use a little touch-up brush for tiny little dots like that but yeah so much so much easier um so this one Probably not for right now, but can you imagine a brushed brass or gold plated faceplate for the switches in this room? I think they would look glorious, but probably not an expense that I'm wanting to fork out right now. I don't think, I don't think. Normally when I'm masking tape, it really finishes everything off and gives a really crisp, clean line. I don't know why it didn't work this time, but I definitely need to go around and once the skirting is cured after maybe about three or four days, I need to scrub the floor to remove the excess from the floor because it just didn't, it's just, it's so messy. It's so, so messy. Like it didn't, didn't get on with the masking tape I used. Maybe I was using the wrong thing. I was using scotch tape as opposed to frog tape just because I had it to hand. Uh, one thing I'd say about painting all the trim now is that I definitely do understand when I go to slightly older ho homes where you can tell that someone's just painted over the wood, like you're like, this looks like 12 layers of paint. I feel like I get it. It's really difficult to paint the trim, especially when it's got such complex detailing, like the OG style detailing um, that the architrave has got. It's so hard because A, you might start off with the best intentions thinking, um, you know, I'll paint it really, really well, super smooth. I'm gonna not let, make sure there's any gloops and stuff. But once you've once you've been painting for like half an hour trying to do that, you get a little bit bored. So I do understand why sometimes that sort of woodwork ends up looking really, really gloopy. 
think I'm going to set myself up here. I've got a plug down this section so I can, you know, plug all my stuff in. I can get a chair quite comfortably here. I could probably even like pull it back and forward a little bit. Some of you also said to do, um, like put it underneath the window, which I have tried. But I just don't like how that looks as a whole. The only other thing I could do is this corner, maybe keep the sofa down here, and then in this corner, put the desk here. But like my back in that corner, let me show you. This corner, again, I've got a plug. I could have, could have my chair and I would be then facing out into the garden. This is such a hard decision, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna pull them in. I'm gonna just get set up in one of the two spaces, try it out for a couple days. If it doesn't work, I don't like it, I can put it a different way. We're just gonna have to play around with the room a little bit. That's what we're gonna have to do. Hello, greetings from the new dining room office space. I should now get used to saying office. I love it. I've been in here now for a good few days since finishing everything off. And I wanted to show you a quick tour and get you up to speed as to where we are because it's not finished, finished, but it is really nice. But there's definitely some changes now that I've been living in here for a little while. Okay, so first thing. So this is what you're greeted with when you open the door. We've got my desk to the side. We've got my chair, got my little laptop, iMac, iPad set up, everything that I need in order to work. As you can see, I'm currently editing and this is a really nice space for me to just literally come in, zone out, do some work and I can leave this space knowing that I've left my work in this room. So I love that. My desk looks phenomenal and I'm so happy I held out for a desk this style. I think it looks gorgeous against the greens of the room. It's got really good storage, just what I need for notepads. Um, when I'm not using my laptop, I can tuck it away in here with my keypads and stuff. I've got enough room on here for all of my devices, very comfortably. I need to get a new chair. This one is doing the job for now, but I definitely need a new one, a bit more of an ergonomical one that really helps with my back because I've been experiencing a bit of back pain and I need something a bit more supportive. Now from this side, you can see the gorgeous, gorgeous sofa that we absolutely adore, but Rob and I have, we have admitted to ourselves that it is just too big for this room. If we had another room where we could have some more storage, it would be fine, but there's just no need for this sofa. Like if I'm not working on this desk, I can go into the living room to have a chill. I think what I would like instead is a sofa half the size, so like a one person deep sofa, so that I can actually sit and have a chill, read a book, sit on my laptop if I want a break from my desk, but I don't need a sofa this big. It's just not good size wise for this this room but it looks gorgeous against the green doesn't it it is such a nice color combo so if you've got a sofa this color or walls this color know that these two colors work really beautifully together the green against the coving at the top i think looks so neat and tidy and i do love it the architrave and the skirting board painting best decision i'm so happy with it i'm glad that i did it at least if not anything else just to say that i've ticked it off and i've tried it now but i know that i really really enjoy it especially for this space let me know what you think about the doors now definitely need to change them because this is too orange for this room however do I paint them black, stain them a darker wood tone, like a mahogany, or do I stain them almost black so that we keep the wood green, but it's it's like black, black in colour. But yeah, I, I adore, I actually adore the painted architraves. It just brings the room some grandeur that I didn't even realise it had. It honestly elevates the space so much. So if you're considering ways to try and elevate your space, I think painting the architraves is a good idea. Um, I've got some paintings, some of my thrifted paintings that I got from the flea market charity shops yet to go up in the room however I haven't figured out what I'm doing in terms of storage and um, so I need to find a unit a cabinet I need to figure out if it's going to sit here or if it's going to sit in this corner I think it's probably likely to sit in this corner because
because it's bigger and I do need a good amount of storage. So I need to figure that out first, order something, build it up, and then I can get all my pictures and frames in the final places. If you're wondering, by the way, this sofa is from Swift. It is a beautiful sofa. It's a modular sofa, which means it all comes apart. Really good for smaller flats or apartments that you can't fit huge pieces of furniture into. Really good if you're someone who kind of rents and bops about quite a lot. Or someone like me who just seems to move things into different rooms every six months. <laughs> One of the major things I took from you guys is advice was the feng shui of the room and putting the desk against the wall just wasn't up for debate. So we've settled on this. I think this is really beautiful and I've really truly enjoyed having this view from sitting at my desk. So like, this is basically what I see. Like this is cute, right? It's so therapeutic. Like I can get distracted, look outside. And actually I want to show you, there are hopefully, hopefully they come out to show you, but in this little birdhouse, yes, can you see? There's some little birdies that go in that birdhouse. Rob and I were gonna take this down a few weeks ago when we first started doing the garden but it turns out we left it too late and in fact we saw birds starting to nest in there they would bring tiny little twigs and branches in probably seen about four or five in them of them in there at any one time and it's so cute to watch i mean i'm not thrilled the fact that i can't change this now because it's not the most appealing thing to look at but there's absolutely no way i'll be taking it down this summer especially if there's little birdies nesting in there so it's really cute i love looking out the window staring at them because they're always always active doing something flittering around like we've just got some really beautiful wildlife in this garden and I can't wait to figure out the rest of how the garden looks so that we can kind of bring more in also I wanted to show you so we ended up sticking with the decision of just painting the like up to the front of the frame so all of the frames painted and then it stops here can you see it just looks like the door frame is white the whole door frame is white but similarly going from this side it still looks really really good it looks really crisp and then we shut the door over, you can't see. It still looks really good, so happy with that decision. Like this painting against these colours is just everything. I can't wait to get it up on the walls. I'm thinking to do some shallow shelving. I don't know whether to do it like this side, although I do want to put curtains up, so maybe that won't work there. So instead, maybe we'll go behind the desk, but do some shallow shelving that I can do a mixture of little bits of decor, some framing, just to draw the eye upwards in the room a little bit more and, you know, kind of have like a talking point of the room. Obviously, I still need a lampshade. I don't know what style to go for, though. Um, again, I'm not going to probably fork out on lots and lots of money for lighting that's not gonna live here for a long time because this room will change eventually but i do want something that makes the room feel quite cozy i do also want a corner lamp thinking to get one of the arched ones that kind of like goes up and hooks over i would absolutely adore this sofa just in a smaller size like if i had this just split in half i would love that because then i would put that in that corner there with the reading lamp over the top of it some curtains wisping away beside it. I'm thinking of doing a double layer curtain pole so the outside has got proper heavy curtains, the inside has got the wispier lighter ones. Those are my ideas so far. Also the radiator. I feel like maybe we should do a radiator cover just to hide it a little bit more because it is quite stark white isn't it? But anyway that's it for the video guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. In the next one we will be doing the garden so keep your eyes peeled and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys. Lots of love. Bye. Mwah.